Rosanna, we're going to take a look from the top of the mountain at you. Up there, things are beautiful and rarefied. We can see all of you through your astrology chart. The astrology, uh -huh. the astrology chart is the best method that I've ever come, up, come across to know yourself. It's a blueprint for your life, for every energy, uh, every interaction of energies that uh, come to you. To know uh, your astrology chart uh, is such an advantage because you know when uh, the times are right to do this or that. Um, you know why, or you have a better idea of why this has happened to you throughout your life or that, um, whether they've been challenges or gifts, blessings, that kind of thing. And we know that by looking at the positions of the planets. When you were born, at the exact moment you were born, it's like a snapshot was taken of the heavens. Uh, and so we know exactly where every position is by sign, which is Aries through Pisces, uh, by house, first house through twelfth house, uh, and by aspect, how the planets relate to each other. Everyone's chart is different. Even if you were born at the same time, you may have been born as someone else. You may, uh, <coughs> you will be have been born in a different place, and uh, all these things matter. Your chart. Time out. Can I do time out? Oh yes, yes, okay. sure. Uh, How does it check out? Oh, it's. I was just waiting for her to say something because I want to make sure you're still. Oh, okay, say something. Something. Okay, th excellent. Okay, that's good. That's all he did. Uh, no, that's all I just wanted to do that. Now I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to leave. Now. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and go with uh, with your chart analysis now. Now there are some um, major uh, aspects and positioning in a chart that we look at, first of all, to see what the driving forces in your life are. <clears throat> the first one is uh, your ascendant. That's the sign. Now, for those who don't know, very briefly, uh, most people have seen an astrology chart. It's a circle divided into 12 sections, like a pie. And where the planets will fall into one of those houses. Each planet will. And then how they will, and each house will tell you what area of life uh, these energies are available in. The ascendant is your first house. That's the beginning. Uh, this is your personality. It's how you present yourself, uh, how people perceive you in this lifetime. In your first house, Marzana, you mm -hmm. have a Sagittarius on the cusp. Uh, I love the sign Sagittarius. It's, uh, it's a very happy, uplifting sign. It's inspirational. It's optimistic. It expands the things that you do. It's a nice, it's a nice sign to have on the house, uh, on your first house cusp, because that is the way you will be perceived. That's the way you perceive yourself. Is you're you're optimistic, and but you also, at the same time, see these aren't even. Each house has thirty degrees in it. But they're not, uh, they're not all even. Some might be 26 degrees, some might be 34 degrees. It, it just depends on when you were born. The uh, Ascendant Sagittarius uh, is at 26 degrees, so it's almost to the end of the sign Sagittarius. That means the other, oh, four, 26 degrees or so, or, or 34 degrees, uh, is the next sign in the zodiac. So if Sagittarius is followed by Capricorn. So you also have a good deal of Capricorn energy in your first house, in your personality. And that's nice because Jupiter and uh, Saturn, which rules, Jupiter rules the sign Sagittarius, Saturn rules the sign Capricorn. Uh, and one follows the other. So the optimism, the uh, the high-mindedness, uh, the ideals of Sagittarius are uh, grounded by 
uh, the sign Capricorn and Saturn because these are um, signs and, and planets that give you the, uh, the energy to work hard, uh, to be responsible, uh, disciplined in what you do. So, you know, if you had a whole bunch of Sagittarius, you tend to kind of fly off into this and that and all this uh, um, optimistic stuff, uh, positive stuff, which is good. But you also need to ground yourself, of course, and so because Capricorn is there. Uh, also in your first house, you have both of these um, uh, energies working in your life. So now we look at the sign that rules, or the, uh, the, the planet that rules your chart, uh, which is a sign on your first house cu uh, cusp or your ascendant. Um, so Jup or Sagittarius is ruled by the planet Jupiter, as I mentioned earlier. So the energy from Jupiter is going to drive your chart. And so you look at where and what way is it driving it? Well, we already know about the optimism and the high-mindedness and, and uh, that kind of thing. But where does it come from? Jupiter is in your 11th house. That's the house of broad goals, humanitarian goals, uh, friends, like-minded friends. Uh, so you are influenced greatly by uh, the optimism that comes to you from the friendships that you make the goals, the common goals you have with like-minded people. All that is, uh, is coming to you from the 11th house. And Jupiter is the, the symbol that looks like a, like a four almost? That's correct. Yes, it is. And it's in the sign Scorpio. So, you see, there's all these little factors that you put in there. It's, it's hard to, in a, in a brief reading, to, to get the full impact. But hopefully we can give you enough to get you get you started, maybe wet your interest a little bit. But Jupiter in the sign Scorpio. Now Scorpio is, the, is an emotional sign. It's uh, filled with intensity. Um, there is, uh, it's almost like a black and white uh, kind of thing where sometimes it's really high. If you can, if you can uh, get to the bottom of things, which is what Scorpio does, it drives to the bottom and wants to find the answers to things. But because you drive and because it becomes sometimes um, an emotional trying time, you can get depressed sometimes through friends, too, um, if they're very intense with you. But you're, you're, you have basically Sagittarius, uh, the, the optimism and the positive that's mixed with a very intense, um, relentless drive to accomplish something in the house that's there. So Jupiter, your, your desire to um, learn about well, things like astrology or metaphysics or things that are beyond convention, you know, dogma, religious dogma, uh, you want to go beyond that. You want to understand the world in, in that way rather than the mundane dogmatic way that that's that's what you're about your friends will help you do that but you 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 have to remember that there's going to be down times as well as up times now as I'm going along here if, if this uh, makes sense to you or if you can relate to it go ahead and say something or if you have a question and you don't think that's quite right go ahead and say uh, that too um I do have a question okay um, from what you perceive with um, the the balancing of the the planets and the planetoids in, in um, the eleventh house, mm -hmm. um, what what kind of humanitarian goals would would uh, best uh, suit uh, my chart? Scorpio, Scorpio rules your eleventh house. So you, if you want to know how you're going to respond or how you should respond uh, to any area of life, whether it's be in your first house or your 11th, in this case, friends, <clears throat> your humanitarian goals <clears throat> will be to uh, embrace your friends, not in a superficial way, in a very real, intense way. 
your goals. You need to go after them as hard as you can possibly. Well, you're actually driven to do this. You can't really help it. Um, when you go after your goals, your humanitarian goals, water, uh, um, Scorpio is a water sign, and water is, uh, has to do with emotions, feeling. Uh, so you're going to have, you will have, you have had deep feelings that you need to get in touch with. Scorpio is not an easy sign to understand because you have to go so deep to really get the fruit that's there. So whatever your humanitarian plans or goals are, uh, you're going to be, you're going to be, and, and you won't be able to help it because Scorpio is ruled by the planet Pluto, just like Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Uh, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. That's the P with a little tag on the bottom there. <clears throat> okay, so see everything relates to everything else. So now you look at Pluto and say, well, what is the ruler of my humanitarian goals? Uh, where is it? What's it doing? What house is it in? What energy is it going to bring to my humanitarian Scorpio goals? Well, it's in your 10th house. And your 10th house is uh, your career, uh, your reputation, its honor, its integrity. Um, and the more honorable you are as you pursue your goals in your career, the more pure will be the energy that goes into the 11th house, which is ruled by Pluto and Scorpio. And Jupiter is there. That's the sign it rules. So it all ties together. Um, also in your 11th house with Jupiter, with this, your, your, and all of this is going to be not just you. It's going to be uh, groups of people, and you can be a leader of those people. Uh, because Jupiter, everybody might, kind of uh, naturally flows toward Jupiterian people, Sagittarius, because they're so pleasant to be around with their uplifting manner and speech and so forth. Okay, but in addition, you have the planet Uranus in the 11th house. Um, Uranus is freedom, uh, is change, it's revolution. In the natural astrology, chart which where uh, the ascendant is Aries and the 12th house is Pisces that's the natural order of the zodiac <clears throat> in the natural order Uranus is actually the ruler of the 11th house even though Scorpio is because of the time you were born the, the wheel spins and stops at the exact moment you were born okay Uranus happened to be uh, in the 11th house along with Jupiter and so uh that's even that's kind of a double shot of humanitarian uh, freedom oriented goals you're moving towards something that's going to free uh, you and your friends and anybody that's involved in the group it'll uh, free them to allow them to go deeper you know, free them from dogma from dogma uh, Uranus can't stand the consensus the way people believe in the, in the world politics business whatever and we know it's pretty messed up messed up these days well Uranus in that 11th house gives you double the power to change that okay I don't know whether you're going to do it with your music or, or with the actions or positions that you take but it will happen um, whatever this chart says it's what's going to happen and these outer planets Pluto Uranus and Neptune those are beyond our control uh, they they bring events into your life. So when you have a sudden change in a friendship, or you all of a sudden a, 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 a aha moment hits you out of the blue, gives you an idea for a goal that you want, you have that uh, power to do that because of the the fact that Uranus is in the eleventh house, its own house. So you put all that stuff together a little bit, and you've got the ruler of your chart, the ascendant uh, Sagittarius, is in your eleventh house. That's Jupiter, right? Yeah. You also have your honest there too, so you've got all the optimism. The, uh, you've got the right thoughts. You've got the uh, the energy to, to go deep with these thoughts, motivate other people, uh, inspire other people, and get to the bottom of where you want to go with whatever goals you have, and that's ruled from your tenth house. 
uh, because Pluto rules Scorpio, uh, which rules the 11th house. Um, and so your career is a transformative thing. Now, your career is how, you, how the public in general perceives you. It doesn't mean you have to be in a profession. It just means how whatever you're doing, whether it's just a job and that's your career, uh, you're going to be an influence for change uh, and transformation. I mean, it's a pretty powerful charge you have here because of all these energies in the higher houses, 10th house of career and public acceptance and responsibility, 11th house of goals and change. Uh, so yeah, that uh, now, definitely go makes ahead. me feel, uh, you know, there's a extra extra pep in my step when it comes to my my job. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, it's there. <laughs> Having Having known that, it's kind of, it's very nice. And you should I have. I am a workaholic, you know. It's, <laughs> I, I get up um, at three or four in the morning, and if, you know, if I can't sleep, I, I start doing, I start working. Oh, and there's another reason for that kind of drive that you have. <clears throat> and that's a perfect question for right now, because <clears throat> let's go back to the ascendant again. And if you remember, Sagittarius is on there, and then Capricorn uh, is also uh, in your in your first house well there's two planets that are conjunct your ascendant right on the first house cusp and very very close your ascendant is 26 degrees and Neptune is 25 degrees of Sagittarius and Mars is 29 degrees of Sagittarius so it's like a stellium of three energies combined that make your personality very powerful but also, with Neptune, see, Neptune is the, the planet of dreams, um, of things beyond uh, what we can touch. Uh, and what is that sign? What does that one look like? That's just above the line on where it says AC, and it's the, uh, uh, gee, what is oh, to describe? It's, like like a, it's like a trident. You know, yeah. Because Neptune, you know, is the king of the sea. And Neptune rules the sign Pisces. Now, this is another water sign. So it's an emotional thing. It's like euphoria. It's like uh, if you can get in touch with another realm through a dream, uh, through a vision. I mean, this is possible with you to have visions with Neptune on your ascendant. Uh, so I have the, uh, the ability... To, to maybe create my own euphoria if I concentrate on that consciousness. Well, it'll come to you naturally. You see, you don't have to try to do any of this stuff. It's come, what's, that's the beauty of knowing your chart, is you know uh, that these things are there. And they're, they are you. I mean, these, this is what your soul wanted to accomplish and do, and these are the tools that you were given, or a lot of people think you picked out yourself. Uh, so that you could uh, accomplish this or that in your soul's evolution, spiritual evolution. And the higher planets, like I was saying, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are the outer planets. They're beyond our earthly control. And so that's why a vision uh, or uh, this feeling of, a, of being in touch with something that's surreal, it's, un, you can't, it's not tangible, it's bliss it's where bliss comes from uh, that feeling of love beyond earthly love a spiritual kind of a love uh, but because it's so uh, hard to get in touch with there's illusion that's also uh, a part of of Neptune energy uh, people will have things happen and they'll and they will or they will observe uh, a situation or a person and and they won't quite understand them and, and, and well you've heard the term maya maya mm -hmm. is illusion and that's Neptune Okay, so all the things you know about maya is the same as what Neptune is there are things beyond what the earthly mind can know oh and if I can go back without confusing you to my discussion of the planet Uranus, which is in your 11th house, remember, with Jupiter? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
that's your higher mind. That's a fast, lightning fast vibrational energy. And things will come to you out of the blue. Like I was saying, thoughts, this is, this is kind of related to Neptune, only Neptune's more of a spiritual type, spiritual type thing and an emotional type thing where Uranus energy is more detached where you can look at things from afar, but you will understand them from a higher uh, perspective than you would with, say, Mercury, which is the lower mind. This is the mind that we use in our everyday functions on Earth. You're a, again, it's one of the higher, the three planets that we have no control over. So you're going to have a fast mind when it, when it comes to uh, the things uh, regarding your, your goals, your hopes and wishes. But they'll happen by themselves. You don't have to try. Just like with Neptune on your ascendant, and it's on the twelfth house side of your ascendant, where Mars is on the first house side of your ascendant. Can you picture that? There's a line going across your chart, uh, horiz yeah. horizontally. Okay, that's mm -hmm. that's your ascendant descendant line. Okay, ascendant is your first house, descendant is your seventh house, just opposite. Okay. On the twelfth house side, these. 12th house is ruled by the planet Neptune. So again, you have this double shot. Neptune rules the 12th house naturally, and Neptune is in the 12th house. So things that have to do with the unconscious, bringing things from this below the surface that you have no idea that are even there. Scorpio does that too, so you've got both of those working there. But um, Neptune will bring those things out. Uranus will make them flash will, 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 will give you this sudden inspiration. It's up to you. The only job you have is to pay attention to the energies that are flowing through you and go with them. If you have a sudden thought, uh, uh, an idea, trust it because it's where uh, the energies are there where they're supposed to be for you. That, that helps a lot. Oh, good. Yeah, because uh, that often happens. And uh, there's uh, so much doubt only because I wonder um, if I'm just being extremely passionate about something that's leading or, or not. And mm -hmm. it's good to know to kind of trust your gut with it. That is, <clears throat> that's a very con important concept. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, trust that it's going to happen. Uh, do the best you can, make the best decisions you can. If the decision isn't in keeping with what your chart would like you to do, it's okay. It just means you're gonna you're gonna get the same opportunity again another time and another time because these energies I've got to flow through you. They're going to. So, pay attention to dreams. Pay attention to inspiration. Uh, and nobody is free of making mistakes. Uh, just your own. Your own. Your only task your only job is to be open to these things stay open don't judge anything uh, and then trust the ideas that come in strong and hard if you practice at that you'll be able to you'll be able to do it on a regular basis you'll be able to put things into categories and understand them but see without astrology you don't have any idea you know what's going on and so illusion is what you would see and what you may have seen up to now. You might have gone after things and they did turn out to crumble in your hands because you didn't understand how to use that energy. That, ener that energy from Neptune in the 12th is pulling things up from the bottom, from wi deep within you where all truth lies within you, within every one of us. But we're led to believe this and that about life uh, on so many levels that are not true, that are illusory. We need to get in touch with the real who we are. Okay, spend enough on time on that. But on the other side of your ascendant, on, in the first house, is Mars. Mars is the planet that drives you and gives you the energy to operate and to, to, uh, to put all these energies together. Okay. Mars is at 29 degrees of Sagittarius. So this stellium, when you, when you have conjunctions, where conjunction being the planets are right together as opposed to a separation in an angle of maybe 60 degrees or 120 degrees or 180 whatever uh, conjunction is the strongest of aspects and you have all kinds of conjunctions in your chart up here um, Mars is conjunct Neptune so 
but your first it's in the first house instead of the 12th so instead of the unconscious uh, being emphasized with Neptune well with Mars in your first house you your personality uh, is emphasized so you're going to be seen as a driving force and it's just like you were saying if you get up at three o'clock in the morning you're not going to just lay around and read magazines you're going to do something uh, productive uh, and that's because Mars gives you that energy in your first house your personality is driving dynamic and Mars is the warrior he's the one that gives you the courage to do the things you need to do uh, it's in the sign Sagittarius and Sagittarius the archer you know you've seen this cliff of the arrow uh, oh yeah right so you've got the warrior in the sign uh, of the um, of the archer you know you're tough you're not nobody's gonna put anything over on you nobody's gonna take <laughs> advantage of you you can fight back with the best of them but always you're maintaining this high-mindedness of Sagittarius and this optimism and that's how you use your energy you don't you don't go around and try to get people you know or try to pay people back if they've offended you or anything you go after the positive part of it. And that's a beautiful thing, to have Mars and Sagittarius like that. And then to combine that with Neptune, because they are a conjunction again, you rely, when you're, when you're talking and inspiring people through your Mars and, and doing things, action, it's always going to be softened by that, that gentle spirit of Neptune. That's where when you're talking, trust, be spontaneous uh, because that's that stuff from beneath the surface, that unconscious stuff that you know uh, but you don't know on a conscious level can be brought out. And if you're spontaneous in your speech, then uh, it will come out uh, through, through the new Neptunian uh, energy and it will be a beautiful thing. And it might come through in your music too because excuse me mars is sextile do you have a chart in front of you by any chance uh yes i do okay can you see the blue line going upward from mars mars is a circle you know what the glyph is for the mars there uh yes okay you uh, see the blue I, lines I, I, going up there mm -hmm. okay blue lines are um easy flowing uh energy they are opportunities for growth Red lines are more challenges, you know, energy to act and, and, uh, and get something done because you're challenged and it's not always pleasant. So you've got to deal with those kind of things. The both, both blue lines and red lines are necessary. You, you know, if you, everything was all easy going, you just, you know, there would be no, no fight in you. If everything was red line, you'd be going around in circles not knowing where the relief was. So you have a nice, a nice balance of the blue and red. <clears throat> anyway, the blue lines going up from Mars to uh, the 11th house again. You have a packed 11th house. You have a packed 12th house. Uh, as far as planets being in there is what I mean, and different kinds of energies. Sec the, the six that's a 60 degree angle, those blue lines going up to the 11th house there. The, the, that's, uh, a sextiles are opportunities for learning, for growth, for getting things done. Without the sextiles, those energies wouldn't be able to work together. But they work together beautifully in a sextile. So you've got Mars that we just talked about, the drive to get things done, your personality being strong, uh, warrior-like, uh, combined with the softness of, of uh, ethereal, uh, Neptune, uh, deep, uh, devotional, really, uh, energy. And that energy is goes up and combines with those two planets. Actually, there's three planets. The one uh, there's Mercury, Saturn, and Pluto. A, another, well, we call those a stellium when there's more than two. If there's two planets together, that's a conjunction. If there's three or more, it's a stellium. So you have a stellium of Mercury, Saturn, and Pluto. 27 degrees, 26 degrees, 26 degrees. Almost one, almost exactly uh, conjunct one another. 
Oh, so, I do see that. Yeah, with yes. the, even the, all the, the little blue lines are all together, even behind the planet mm -hmm. on the dial. Yes, that's right. Now, that, what that means is that all those energies are working together. When one is working, the other is working. When the other one was working, it, it, it works with, with that. So what do these three planets mean? What are the energies that are available? And again, we're talking about your career now because it's in the 10th house uh, and your honorability and, your, and uh, how people perceive you in a public light, um, your discipline, all that kind of stuff. All right. The first planet, Nastilium, is Mercury. That rules communication. Okay. So you're singing, you're writing, you're speaking your idea accumulation, the thoughts that you get. See, nothing is one way. These are, we're talking about things you can accomplish in your life, uh, maybe the challenges that will be there. But it's also uh, others too, because we're all connected. Uh, so when one person makes progress with their chart, it's like everybody else, it's just like adding a little light to the entire thing. So when you're speaking or singing, or communicating or receiving information. That's all Mercury energy. And Mercury rules the sign Gemini, Gemini, just so you know. And that's, remember, that's your lower mind. Now, lower mind isn't a, de uh, uh, isn't a bad thing. It's just <coughs> a way to distinguish the difference between our everyday thinking and our higher, higher mind thinking, which vibrates so fast that you have to be in tune to catch it, uh, to get the real gist of, of what's going on. Whereas Mercury, that's just the way you normally get used to it. Well, Mercury, well, that's in the sign Libra. Uh, Libra is the uh, balance, uh, beauty, the arts, uh, music, uh, art, all that, all those, uh, those kind of things. Well, you're naturally communicative in that matter uh, about those things that, that Libra rules. You follow me? Yeah. Okay. Now, Saturn is next to it. Saturn's energy is going to be combined with that communication of Mercury. Saturn, if you remember, is rules assigned Capricorn, which is also in your first house. You're going to have to listen to this over and over again to catch all these details and put them together, I'm sure. But um, Saturn is, again, it's another one of the double bangs because Saturn rules the, so the, the, ho the tenth house nat in the natural zodiac. So you've got three planets in a row there in three different houses, all double emphasized. Saturn is discipline, honor, responsibility. You have to take those uh, Mercury thoughts and ideas and do something with them if you want to, re to uh, realize your goal. But the energy is there. I mean, everybody can say that, but you have those together in your chart. You are going to do that. You do have responsibility. Uh, the opposite side of Saturn, the more negative sign, is you can get depressed. You can think, well, I've got to be perfect. If I don't do this just right, I'm a failure. Uh, and get depressed and morose. That's the That's other side of Saturn. Huh? <laughs> you, you relate to that? Uh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I, me too. I do. <laughs> I, you do too? Yeah, well, I am a Capricorn, and my Mercury is in Capricorns. So, yeah, I have the highs and the low. you know. I try to be responsible. I try to get everything done I need to on time when I'm supposed to. Capricorn, Saturn energy is uh, punctual. They can't stand to be late. <laughs> and so... When you have a performance, you can't be late or it's going to drive you crazy uh, with anxiety. So, okay, so, you know, every planet can be expressed, every energy can be expressed uh, either positively or negatively. It just depends on what you, what you do with it. Uh, so, in the 10th house, though, that is going to exp be expressed Saturn uh, success is going to be there. Saturn is the foundation. It's building a structure on solid uh, ethics uh, and, like I say, honorability. And the more honorable and and into uh, uh, discipline and fair-minded you are, well, Saturn and Mercury are in the sign Libra, and fair-minded is uh, their their key balance. They can't stand to, to see people be 
downtrodden or treated poorly. Uh, and you can communicate, you can speak out. So if you want to relate that back to your 11th house and your goal, your humanitarian goal, maybe, maybe uh, you decide you want to communicate to these uh, uh, people that don't, aren't, aren't as well off uh, bring them up. That's exactly what I was uh, thinking. I was, uh, I was thinking that if I was going for um, accounting and finance with my degree, because I'm trying to finish up finish up my bachelor's, it's not finished. I was trying to think of I was thinking of a nonprofit oh. to uh, yeah for financial planning for the less fortunate who could never be able to go to a financial planner, even though they may not be able to make investments at least they can budget to to have investments in the future well that's very interesting that you had said that because libra the sign that rules your 10th house which is your career uh is the sign that rules money did you know that no so there it is right there on your 10th house you very well could go that direction um but uh I gotta definitely learn the financial planning for myself, though. So. <laughs> well, planning is a word for Saturn, and which is in your tenth house. Planning, foundation, structure. You will do things right. Believe me, you have the energy to do that you know, in abundance. And then Pluto uh, is also in that same stellium. You see how close it is to Saturn and Mercury. So now, what Pluto? Pluto is a sign that rules Scorpio, if you remember. And mm -hmm. that is transformation, getting down to the bottom of things. Uh, and I mean the bottom of things beyond what you think you can get to. You would be surprised at stuff that is down there so low that you don't even have any ideas there. If you do that, if you take your communications, Mercury, uh, your information gathering and disseminating, uh, Use your discipline, your responsibility, your honorability to build a strong foundation. That's Saturn. Now you're going to add in the energy of Pluto. Transformation. You have the power to transform um, government, for one thing, because 10th house rules government. Um, you could transform anything that you decide to go into, whether it's accounting, uh, it doesn't matter music you will have a transformational effect you can't help but have a transformational effect because pluto is there so you've got that strong stellium in your 10th house career house mercury communication saturn discipline responsibility <clears throat> building solid structures and pluto the transformation the transformation will happen the quicker the quicker you gain the information that you need to and you've already got your college uh, background going uh, the discipline is going to be coming naturally to you. Uh, the hard work is there with your Mars in the first house. Now, there's two more things in your 10th um, house of business. So let's continue to talk about that. <clears throat> Next to Pluto, down to the left, is Venus. You see that? Pluto, We're in the 10th house. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So you see what we've just been talking to. The one on the farthest on the right is Mercury. That's the glyph for Mercury. And then the little H is Saturn. And the P is Pluto. You see those? Oh, oh yes. And so, okay. So Venus is the, the female symbol. That's correct. And it's the sign that rules Libra. I mean, it's the planet that rules the sign Libra. So here we go again. A double hit. you got... The, the sign on the house cusp of your career, Libra, balance, fair play, the arts, music, uh, balancing, injustice, um, and Venus, the ruler of that sign, Libra, is there in the 10th house that is ruled by Libra. So it's a double hit. But instead of being in the sign, sign Libra, it's in Scorpio. Um, you can tell the difference because you see how the numbers get from the from mercury it goes 26 degrees saturn 26 pluto 27 venus is seven degrees okay they get smaller as you descend in this chart and when you're reading a chart so you know that if it's seven degrees it's got to be the next sign all right so scorpio is the next sign 
Venus in your 10th house just adds uh, more to the, to the energy that we talked about, Libra meaning, which I just went through with the music and the arts and the finer things of life and gentleness and softness and balance and all that kind of stuff in your career, whatever, that man, man, whatever that's going to be. Now, if you look right next to Venus, also in the 10th house, is your sun. Now, the sun is, of course, the main uh, principle in your astrology chart. It, it is what your purpose is, uh, and it integrates all the other factors if you use your energy from, from your sun. Your sun, of course, is Scorpio. It's exactly conjunct at seven degrees Venus. They're right together there in the 10th house. So all the things I just said about Libra and the arts and all that kind of stuff is part of your purpose. You are supposed to make things more beautiful in this world. And by doing so, uh, you're going to have a lot of honor restored on you. If you do the things, if you build a solid foundation, if you communicate them, uh, if you gather the information necessary, if you trust your uh, emotional uh, depth to the, that the things that they bring up are the things you need to know, you can be uh, very successful. And that's kind of an understatement. No, no, not to build you up because, you know, it just depends on, on how you use these energies. They, they can be used in a very unsung way, but in this chart, I don't think so. I think you'll probably be famous. Okay. But if you're not, don't blame me. <laughs> okay. Be like, yeah, I'm famously unfamous. <laughs> well, you're just a kid, though. You're a youngster. Just kidding. Okay. All right. Now, the three main things in your astrology chart, if you just want to get a basic, is your ascendant. We've covered that pretty well. Your sun, uh, and that's in the 10th house. Uh, so that has to do with your career. Uh, it's conjunct Venus. Uh, you've got all that other help in the same 10th house with those other planets providing energy for you that cannot be stopped. Um, and the third is where your moon is, okay? Your moon happens to be in the sign Aries. Aries is ruled by the planet Mars. Now you see how all these things connect together, and it takes a lot of study to get to get comfortable with it, but... Aries is ruled by Mars. Moon in Aries is in your fourth house. Your fourth house is your home, your environment that offers you security, makes you feel good. Okay? Mm -hmm. Moon is your past also. It has to do with karma. Uh, most astrologers uh, believe in reincarnation. And we carry things over from a past life and we work on and we continue to evolve as souls. Your moon has been placed in the fourth house because that's where you get your security from your home. Your home is very important. And it's another double hit because the fourth house in the natural zodiac is ruled by the sign Cancer and Cancer is ruled by the planet Moon. So you have Moon in the same fourth house that's ruled, that rules it naturally. So you got another double hit. Powerful, powerful stuff here. But you got and moon, your your moon, your home, you're gonna have kind of a leadership quality there. Aries is first. It's uh oh, and by the way, that Mars that, that I told you about is in your uh, right conjunct your ascendant uh, in your first house. Mars rules the first house, so there's another double hit. So it rule see everything Mars rules. Each planet rules a sign in a house, so you can kind of coordinate things together. So, whereas whereas Aries, Mars rules Aries. It's on the fourth house. That's where your moon is important. And you have a trine. You see the blue line that goes from Mars to the moon. Can you see mm -hmm. the moon down there? That's a crescent. Okay, yeah. that's gifts that you have learned, earned from past life successes. Okay, and you have, as you can see, uh, trying both to Mars and to Neptune. So all those things we talked about, about your leadership ability, your uh, drive to get things accomplished, softened by the Neptunian uh, uh, um, oh, I 
wish I could think of this. Well, this is a perfect example of Neptune. If you don't describe it right, it can be pretty confusing because you can't get a hold of some things. It's a feeling, uh, an emotion that, you, that is beyond what you're used to dealing with. Uh, so, Moon uh, has the gifts of of the Mars energy and Neptune to help it establish security in the home. And there will and you will be a leader in your home. Now, home doesn't always have to be your family home. I mean, it could be a, a, a psychological home that people come to and you go to for a retreat or release or relief, a place, um, you know, something whatever place it is that gives you a sense of security, whatever that place is, you need to do that. You need to uh, use that energy. Uh, let it come through. But you see the red line going from Pluto up to the 10th house of your career. That's, an oppo <laughs> that's called an opposition. An opposition is a, is a, a challenging uh, aspect because both of the ends of that opposition want to express themselves and they're kind of cross purposes uh, like the home life uh, and the career should I spend more time at home should I spend more time on my c career that's going to be a, a constant with you and you're going to have to come to a balance this is the nice thing about having Libra on the 10th house you're going to have uh, the opportunities to balance all these energies so that you can uh, feel comfortable in yourself and be secure with yourself while still going out and fulfilling your uh, need to do something in the public that's going to be helpful to other people to establish goals and everything like that. I see because uh, I, I happen to work from home and maybe oh. I, yeah, I, maybe I overdo it a lot with the work where because I can do it at any time that I don't give myself the time to do anything else mm -hmm. you have to uh, when you're home you have to be able to relax you know and separate work from from your home from your relaxation uh, you will get security from the things you accomplish in your uh, in your profession you know whether it be from the money or the accomplishment or the groups that you're involved with, that's going to give you security. But when you're working out of your home, you have, you have, that might be a problem if you do it to the extent that it takes your time for relaxation. You, you have, with as much energy as you have in your chart, you have to slow down sometimes. You have to relax. And, but Moon in Aries does not want to relax. It wants to keep go, 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 go. You know, because Mars is actional. Aries rules uh, is ruled by Mars. But it works flow. It flows smoothly. So it's not going to be that big of a problem, I don't think. Don't don't read too much into it. I mean, that's the only. You don't even have a square in here. Squares are internal tension, whereas the opposition we're talking about, uh, Moon in the fourth to the tenth house stuff that we talked about. Uh, mm -hmm. That is other people, other circumstances that you'll be dealing with, okay? Out, outer, outer things. Whereas if you had squares, which are 90 degree angles, it's, it creates a lot of inner conflict. Uh, and so you got tension eating at you uh, all the time. You don't have a lot of that. So um, this opposition is, the, is really the main challenge that you have. Everything else is going to flow smoothly. You've got a nice life. Uh, in front of you, Marzana. Um, there are other factors, uh, many, many other factors. There are things like progressions. Progressions is uh, uh, the progress that you have made as you uh, move through your life and, and uh, meet your challenges or get defeated by them or whatever. And you can tell what energies are uh, happening depending on where the planets have moved to in all the years since your chart was formed at birth. For example, you have your progressed moon is about to go into the sixth house. This is the house of service, of work, um, 
and health. And it's in the sign Gemini. Gemini relates to Mercury. It's accumulating information. You may accumulate information during the next two years uh, that will help others in their uh, pursuit of health. You uh, will be able to use the information that you gather in the next couple of years um, to heal self and others of any thoughts that are not helping you. Gemini is thoughts, communication, Mercury, uh, information, all the things we talked about there. So with your sixth house being ruled by Gemini and your progressed moon now having moved to accent that sixth house, that means as the progressed moon moves through the sixth, uh, you will be confronted with those issues, or uh, not confronted so much as uh, um, they're made available to you. So pay attention to all the inter information that's coming in uh, that will be what you might think is healing to yourself or others. It's uh, actually a pretty big, big thing. Your progressed sun, Mercury, and Venus are all in the 12th house. That means there's going to be, uh, has been uh, for some time. Well, Mars, actually, Sun just barely went into your 12th house from the 11th. And if you remember what the 12th house was, that's the unconscious, bringing things up from the surface. It's secrets, long hidden secrets that you're going to have to bring up and face. and. And you'll get information from that because Mercury is also progressed into your 12th house, as is Venus. So what I would tell you at this time is really pay attention to the, th the thoughts that's, that well up from beneath for uh, inf inspiration because they will help you integrate your whole chart and understand it. This is kind of a, boy, here's a million things, memorize them all and you know who you are. It's not like that. It's a process. Uh, gradual learning. If you have enough interest, fine. If you don't, it's going to take care of itself anyway. But just know this, that at this time, there's a certain wisdom that you don't maybe understand yet that's going to be made available to you, going to be communicated to you, that you can serve others with, uh, that you can heal yourself with, your psyche, your emotional life, uh, material life, all of it. And, I mean, it's all laid out there perfectly. And that's probably about as far as I'll go now. Do you have some questions? Uh, yes. Um, what do you see um, would be the most likely reason why um, I would I would get to travel abroad? Okay. Within okay. The chart. That's that's a good question. Um, and the way we find out about travel is we look at the sign, uh, the planet Jupiter, the sign Sagittarius, which Jupiter rules, and the ninth house, which Jupiter also rules. Okay. All right. Jupiter. What you want to do is see if Jupiter is being um, aspected by planets in their daily motion or progressed. Oh, that's going to confuse you. So. Let me just take a look with this little magnifying glass that Darren's given me here. Your Juno is at 18 degrees of Scorpio. Okay. Here's, here's something that's cool that I just found. Trances is a daily motion. There is another uh, symbol. If you look across from the ascendant over to the DC, that's your seventh house. And if you mm -hmm. look up above there, you see that little glyph that looks like a. Um, a T? What is that? What'd you say? It looks like a, a, a T and maybe inside of a symbol. Yeah, it's like two, two little circles with a line, a, a line. That's called the North Node. And. They don't have it in these charts, but if you look straight across, there's a south node also. For some reason, this particular uh, place that I get these charts from doesn't put the south node in. But those are extremely important. The north node is your destination, your direction that you're supposed to be heading. The north node is in your seventh house uh, in Cancer, and the moon rules Cancer. Um, but the seventh house is ruled by Gemini. But the, the uh, 
the North Node is in Cancer. The direction in this life is to establish relationships, seventh house, um, to, uh, to find things that allow you to be secure, because remember, moon rules the sign Cancer, to establish a, a, a home uh, that is loving and nurturing uh, for any idea that you have. See, it's not just physically comfortable. Your ideas, the ideas that you have, the connections that you make, putting this together with that, relationships, whether they're personal relationships or thought relationships, uh, you need to nurture them. You need to give them water and food so that they can grow. That's what your soul wants you to go. Now, your son, your purpose is, you know, the way this is going to happen is through your 10,000 in, in business uh, or profession or career, uh, and it's going to happen with your Libra 10th uh, house, so it's going to be balanced and fair. Uh, and the south node, the opposite sign, is where you've come from in the past. You've come from a place where you were involved with things of your, of your own personal nature. This time uh, around, you're finding things that are of value for other people, making relationships for other people. The things that you learn, the communications that, that you make, the information you get, uh, is to be used to make others comfortable and happy, whether they're ideas, uh, or personally speaking. And especially with all of those planets up above the horizon, that's all other people, okay, as opposed to yourself. So before you were working on yourself, making you stronger, now you got strong enough where you're supposed to go out and help nurture other people. Now this relates to your moon in the sixth house progressed and your moon in the fourth house uh, at your natal chart. So. I don't know, how, how did I get off of Jupiter anyway? How, what, what made me do that? Uh, hmm. I don't know why, but let me go back to Jupiter and your, thing, your question. Oh, I know why. <laughs> because the North Node in transit, the tr North Node has been moving. And the place that it is in transit at this moment is at 22 degrees of Scorpio. The nodes go backwards from the planets. Your Jupiter, the, the planet that rules travel, is going, uh, is at 18 degrees of Scorpio. So if the North Node, the transiting North Node, the direction you're supposed to go at this time in your life, um, is going backwards and there's only four degrees left before it gets to exactly conjunct your Jupiter. Do you want me to explain that again because it's important? How, how long does that take, the four degrees? Four, I wish I had my planetary ephemeris with me, but uh, it takes, it'll probably be uh, within the next uh, couple, three months. But it's, you know, when, once it gets within five degrees, when a planet is approaching an, or, or, a, or a glyph like this is approaching a sensitive area, you start feeling it within five degrees. So this is why you're thinking about this right now. Uh, is because you're within four degrees, right? 22 night down to 18. So within a few, yes, you're going to continue moving, and <clears throat> and you will go somewhere, probably with a friend, not between now and, well, hey, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, this one indication is you're coming to Washington to do the. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's I mean. Like, it's like a couple of degrees. Yes, mm. so it's, it's already <laughs> in effect. But by the, <coughs> excuse me, by the time it gets to the exact degree of Jupiter, uh, there may be other travel. It, it, it may be long distance. The Jupiter rules uh, foreign countries and so, so forth and travel to foreign countries. That may be there. But at the same time, Saturn in its transit is moving, is also in Scorpio. Uh, it's at 10 degrees of Scorpio and it and it's going to take a lot longer before it gets to your Jupiter because it goes forward and then it goes retrograde, which means that it's going backwards and your energies are turned inward. But we won't go into that right now, okay? Just believe me. It's going to be a while uh, before that gets there. Now, Saturn can 
challenge you to make sure your structures are in place before travel is available to you. It can limit you if you're um, if there's anything that's not structurally sound uh, in the way you're looking at things, and it's in your that's, and it's ha- yeah. Right. It's debilitating. <laughs> it, it's debil- it can be debilitating, and it's just gone over your Venus sun, so you probably have had some limitations in the past year, uh, or at least few months, um, concerning your, your purpose and uh, balancing things just right, and you're kind of up in the air. And, but the purpose for limitation is not negative. It's, it's a positive thing because it makes you work harder at getting your foundations stronger, shored up, and we all do. I mean, every time Saturn touches any of ours, we've got to look at what it's uh, touching, what energy is touching, and make sure that we've got uh, our ducks in a row there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and then now, as far as overall in your life, as far as uh, travel goes, uh, it will, you probably go places, will be traveling with friends because it's in your 11th house, or you will travel because of uh, a goal or a group effort a humanitarian effort uh, this would uh, this would give you cause to travel with Jupiter in that 11th and because Uranus the planet of surprises sudden things that you don't even expect unexpected stuff is also in that 11th house uh, that travel thing could come up just suddenly I mean something you're not even expecting all of a sudden there's the opportunity take it now the ninth house is the other uh, um, thing that you look at for travel because Jupiter naturally rules that. Well, if you look at the ninth house there, that little M with the tail kind of wrapping around there, <clears throat> that's the sign Virgo. The sign Virgo is ruled by, Gem- by Mercury. Mercury rules two signs, Virgo and Gemini. They both have to do with thought and and. Uh, getting information and so forth, but Virgo is more precise. It's just really hon- very detail-oriented. When you're looking at the, see, the ninth house doesn't only rule travel, it ru- rules um, the meaning, the real meaning of life. That's Sagittarius. That rules, remember Sagittarius it rules your chart because uh, mm-hmm. it's on the cusp? <clears throat> well, that's what the ninth house is all about, too. With Virgo on the cusp of that, that means uh, you're going to be very detailed and and finding out um, about the meaning of life. That's what you want to do. Now, you don't have any planets on there. It's not the biggest thing in your life, but, but when you do think about the meaning, you want to get the, you want to know all of it. And you, uh, uh, you don't want to uh, be too broad with your thinking. You've got to narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down. And this will happen naturally throughout your life. And so you look at the ruler of the ninth house, Mercury, and Mercury's in the stellium in the tenth house. Your travel will be uh, business-related or goal-related. So that's what you have to look for. Uh, 